Hey minions, welcome to Crank It Up. I'm Jim Price, and on this episode of Faction Factory, I want to feature the Iron Man faction by the King of the Pupaks himself, Giampiero Giacomini. The Iron Man faction is unique in that it only has one minion, Tony Stark. I was skeptical about this at first, but I got really excited about it when I remembered a quote from a TV show in which Tony says, one of me is more than enough. And I think it's extremely true to the character that he would try to win by himself. This faction is almost entirely closed off, and I'm okay with that. I have a faction that intentionally avoids synergy, and I think it'd be good to have at least one in the game. It's easiest to do that when you refer to card subtypes, which Iron Man does, the armor actions. Armor actions are play on base actions with power, similar to the kaiju, but with less opportunities for exploitation. When you combine Tony Stark with the other armor actions, you still total 30 power, like the kaiju, but the spread is normalized at 3 power per card. There are 9 total armor cards, 4 of which appear twice and 1 that appears once. And since it's inevitable, just like Thanos, many of these cards will be compared to their kaiju equivalents. It's not necessarily fair to compare the two, and I seriously considered making this a Call the Week style episode, but I instead wanted to show how I think the Iron Man faction provides the kaiju feeling with a more consistent playstyle. I've had players say the kaiju are broken. I've heard them described as mediocre. The truth is somewhere in between. Tony Stark, the sole minion, has the talent to hunt for armor cards by revealing the top 5 cards of the deck, like Favor of Athena for armor cards. One revealed action can be placed into your hand, and the others are shuffled into your deck. There's a very good chance that you will draw an armor card that you can play as your action or queue up for a future turn. Of course, as the only minion, you aren't guaranteed to draw him, and you will be wasting many of your minion plays without a good synergy. The only armor action that appears once is the rescue armor, which has the talent to destroy itself to destroy a minion of power 4 or less on the same base. As a self-destructive action, it makes sense to have this be the only action without a second copy, as you might be power starved if you get too destruction happy. This is a slightly better tail smash. The heartbreaker armor is slightly worse than radioactive breath, but can at least destroy your own minion. Not that you should be doing this often, given that you are looking at 11 total minions most likely, but the flexibility is nice. It's also optional, whereas radioactive breath is not, and that mandatory nature has backfired on occasion, as it means the base won't break this turn. The heavy duty brute is the normalized form of stomp, 3 power and 2 breakpoint damage instead of 2 power and 3 breakpoint. I love stomp when combined with Johnny, but in the general case, heavy duty brute is more useful and consistent because it does the same damage but gives you more power, and power wins bases. The Silver Centurion lines up somewhat well with Wade through the buildings, offering more flexibility in the ability to target a play on minion action in exchange for not nuking all opposing actions on the base. However, unless you are playing against specific opponents, or you mistakenly allow Wade through the building to be copied by Hello Dolly and used against you, which really happened to me, Wade through the buildings is overkill, and the Silver Centurion will prove adequate. The last armor style is something new, mild after the Dust Devil. It can provide a last minute 3 power on a base that is scoring, allowing for an easy second place finish or last minute swings. So if those are the minion style actions, we are left with two double features that serve the faction well. Given the necessity of having actions that provide power, what I do best does what is needed most, retrieve them. This is a monkey see monkey do style action for armor actions, and while it doesn't benefit any other faction directly, it does facilitate mass card draw which always helps. And it helps ensure that the Iron Man minion handicap doesn't prove it to be an issue. Most factions punt on their actions often, you cannot afford to do this with Iron Man. The other double feature lines up with Kaiju Conflict, giving you two action plays, but only armor actions. And they have to be different. You still get 6 power, but this means that you cannot double stomp the heavy duty brute for another 4 breakpoint damage, which is certainly reasonable. You also cannot chain these two actions together like you could with Kaiju Conflict, meaning that your turns are more consistent and spend less time waiting for the big play. I think that these are good, logical choices for the double features. Most of the other actions are going to serve the armor cards and allow the Iron Man player to pursue different playstyles. Extremis can facilitate a bait and switch style play, transferring any number of armor cards to a single other base, allowing these actions to swarm. 
Suit Change can swap out one armor card for another at the same base, which makes sense given the one-shot nature of some of the armor cards. You can play a Silver Centurion to destroy an action, then swap it out on a later turn for Heavy Duty Brute to finish off the base. Similarly, a Heartbreaker can destroy a lower minion one turn, then swap out for Rescue to take out the larger minion. When you begin to run out of armor cards, one last surprise can shuffle in your armor cards to replenish your deck, giving you an extra action. That extra action is crucial because it means you won't have to suffer a rebuilding turn, something that the kaiju can struggle with since their equivalent card can be slow. For a more generalized rebuild, Return to Hardware Mode gives you a fresh hand as you shuffle in your hand and discard pile into your deck, drawing 5 cards. You also get an extra action, so again you avoid the rebuilding turn, but at the cost of certainty, as you don't know what you are going to draw, which can be a difficult trade-off. Then again, if Tony Stark is in play, you have increased chances of seeing the armor cards you want. The last two actions are primarily designed to protect Tony Stark, though they have uses for other minions, as they protect minions, not just Tony. Jarvis now can sacrifice an armor card from hand to prevent a minion from being destroyed, while Hulkbuster will increase a minion's power and prevent it from being destroyed at all times. The power increase alone would block most destruction, and I think that this is better served on another minion, as Tony Stark is so vital to the faction that you don't want to make his base easier to score. Getting to Tony himself is obviously crucial to the Iron Man faction. That might imply using the killer plants, but then you'd be extremely minion starved and the other sprouts would be useless. However, as an all-star partner, you have multiple avenues. You have the all-star sprout as well as the all-star gelf. You have granny for more deck manipulation and a good amount of card draw from the all-stars. Once you get to Tony, you can keep him around using begin the summoning to put him back on top of the deck and it's astounding to play begin the summoning again. You can deplete your hand quickly with the extra armor plays, then shuffle them all back in and use square deal to draw them back. Of course, you could choose to maximize the fact that they are still play on base actions. Most non-kaiju such factions would love this pairing. I think the kaiju would struggle with only 4 minions, but I think the truckers fit best because of the mobility of armor cards. Extremists can set up a very good rubber chicken play, while El Bandito plays extra armor cards every turn. Good buddies are near guaranteed to draw cards, and the idea of using the Iron Man one-shot abilities only to pull them over to your true destination works well. The truckers also have the minion movement to keep Tony Stark in play, as Cab over Jarvis can chauffeur Tony to a new base as it starts to get crowded, and Tony becomes a mobile engine. If you want minions to play, there are a few routes you can go. First, you can look at the self-replenishing minions of the Time Travelers. Timebox gives you the extra action in a more generalized form than El Bandito, while the jumpers solve your minion play problem. As you start to run out of minions, 1.21 gigawatts can put them back into your deck without over-dilution, something that Return to Hardware mode cannot avoid. Given how quickly this faction both hunts for cards and shuffles frequently, I actually like the Time Raider's ability here as another means to get armor cards or important support actions. The Time Travelers get actions that actually help advance on bases instead of slowing everyone down, although you do still have your stall tactics should you want to maximize your rebuilding turn with even more of a buffer. Maybe playing minions every turn is not in your best interest, especially with a chance to catch up. The halflings can play all their minions in one turn, while also having the searching and recursion that helps find Tony Stark. Out of nowhere will guarantee you two minions, which has a good chance of being Tony when you have only 11. The halflings have great card draw as well, plus two cards that will help Tony is drawn often. Spoiled Brats in particular is a good fit, as you already have plenty of actions, and the means to grab them, allowing you to spend a few turns guaranteeing minion draws. You could also overwhelm your deck with minions by pairing them with robots. Here you'd actually have 19 minions and 21 actions, which is almost a normal spread. While many of the robots would be brought back down to earth, and you'd be left with mostly below power minions, being able to consistently play minions is a good thing. The robots go from mostly wasting their action plays to always having actions to play, including ones that help break bases, solving their biggest weakness. But robots are controversial and often banned, and there is one other faction that can help guarantee minion play, and you had to know that this was coming from me, Innsmouth. They give all the same benefits that they gave to the kaiju, but this time Gorgodzola isn't around for the power counters. However, that does free up Dagon, and the Iron Man faction has more consistent card draw and shuffling than the kaiju, which might make up for it. 
The Innsmouth also have the means to directly retrieve Tony Stark with Return to the Sea, then shuffle him back in with new acolytes. And because the Innsmouth provide more consistent card draw than robots, you are gradually thinning your deck and creating the possibility that you keep playing the cards you want over and over again. Given that the Innsmouth want to spread out anyway, having a card like the Stealth Armor ensures that you are never left out of the action. This may not be as strong as Kaiju Innsmouth, but it does provide much of the same feeling and allows that combo to be played in a slightly different manner. With the right pairing, I do think the game can sustain a single minion faction, and who better than Tony Stark? He's selfish and egotistical, rarely playing well with others. If I had to pick something to change about this faction, I'd take a second look at the Hulkbuster card. While extremely thematic, it seems a bit out of place with the rest of the faction that is typically insular. Maybe that's a good thing, as it means not every card is closed off, but I think a card protecting armors may have been more self-synergy. But overall, I like the risk-reward nature of this faction only having one minion, and I think you will too. What do you think of the Iron Man faction? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, let's shut it down.